All right, good evening, fifth graders. Tonight we're going to be working with how to use the protractor. So tomorrow when you come to school, you're going to be having a protractor. I wanted you to bring home the protractor so you could kind of take a look at it while you're watching this video tonight. So let's kind of see how we're going to do this today. First of all, we have the number 180. There's two things I've been wanting you to remember with the number 180. First of all, the number 180, it's a straight line, right? When I add up all the angles on a straight line, it will always equal 180. Another thing is, with a triangle, if you add up all the angles inside a triangle, it will also always equal 180. Keep that in mind. Those are two main concepts I need to remember today. The next one, 360, that's all the angles when you add them up in a circle. When you add up all the angles in a circle, it equals 360. Today we're going to be finding the missing number. We're going to be taking that knowledge of 180 and 360 and finding a missing number with it. That's what the point of this link is. Have some fun little things right here. Obviously, what's missing here? We have a, a wing of an airplane missing. Okay, right here we've got some fun little pictures. You can have some fun with this. Where are the missing things? I'm not very good at this, but as you can kind of see to the left compared to the right, things that are missing, things that are there. Okay, I used to love these things on airplane rides with my family growing up. Take a look at this next picture. Kind of see if you can find the missing things in the top compared to the bottom. Once again, this kind of making the lesson a little more fun, but today you're going to have to find out what is missing in the math problem. It's kind of a fun lesson. Or I guess tomorrow, I should say. Take a look at this one, some things that are missing. Looks like the whiteboard, some things I'm noticing right away. Um, what else is missing there? Some things on the bookshelf, some things on the desk, the globe is missing. Once again, you're probably a lot better at this than I am. Let's take a look here. If I have the number 5, and I want to get to the number 12, what's my missing number? 7. 5 plus 7 equals 12. Let's say I have the, the number 50. And I have to get to 180. What's my missing number? Well, what am I going to have to do? Just like up here, I had to do 12 minus 5, right? That's how I got to 7. I did it mentally. But here you're going to be having to show your work. You have to go 180 minus 50. Some of you can do that mentally. Equals 130. So my missing number would be 130. Okay? Sometimes you're going to have to do it with three numbers. So you're going to have to have, like, let's say we're, kind of get, we're trying to get to the number 180 again, because today you're going to have to get to 180 often. Let's say I have 76 plus 49. What is my missing number? So now you're going to have to do multiple steps. First of all, you're going to have to add, I'm going to go ahead and change my color here. You're going to have to add 76 plus 49. Got a 15 here, 8, and you have a 12. We have 125. Then we're going to have to subtract that 125 from 180. I'm going to have to borrow here. Better take my time so I don't get any wrong. It's 55. So my missing angle would be 55, or my missing number. Let's see if I have any more examples. Let's do another one together. I'm getting to 180 again. That's my magic number today. I'm going to throw the number, let's say 56, 1, 10. I have to find out what this missing number is. Okay. Well, today you're going to be adding 110. Plus 56, 6, 6, 1. Do you understand why you have to add it up? Because we have to find out what the missing number is. We have to add these two together. Or you could subtract 180 minus 56 minus another 10, which sounds like a ton of work. So let's just keep going like this. Nice strategy. 166, subtract it from 180. This becomes a 10. This becomes a 7. We have a 4. We have a 1. 0, my missing number is 14. This is why we're doing this. If you add up all the angles inside a triangle, it will equal 180. Well, I know what two of the angles are. So on my paper, I'll be writing 120 plus 35 plus blank equals 180. Well, in order to do this, I'm going to have to add up 120 plus 35, right? 0, 5, 1. I'm going to take 150. Subtract it from 180, this one's mental math, is 30. 30 is my missing number, so this angle's got to be 30. Now, if I add up all of these numbers, 
will equal 180. It's kind of a fun trick here. Let's keep going here. So what's my missing number there? Well, I know when I add up all three angles inside a triangle, it equals 180. Some of you are like, I'm just going to do this mentally. My advice is not to do it mentally. Just want to figure it out. First off, follow my steps. I'm going to add the two numbers I know together. Got 130 here. I'm going to subtract 130 from my 180 to find my missing number, and it's a 50. Did I do something wrong here? 5, 13, be 50. For some reason that's not right. Thinking out loud, that isn't right. Look what I did wrong, kids. I have a 5 here. 135 I've got to be subtracting. Holy cow, you got to hear me think out loud. 35. I've got to borrow. A 5, this is a 7, so I have a 4. This should be a 45. 45. The reason why I knew I did that wrong, kids, is because I know 45 plus 45 equals 90, and I know 90 plus 90 is 180. So that's how I, was, I knew I did that one incorrectly. Today you're going to be using the protractor. You're going to be using this part of your template. Please don't use the full tractor protractor yet, or the full circle protractor. You're going to be using your half circle protractor. Keep in mind, we have a straight line, which equals 180. You're going to be reading it like a clock. There's two numbers we're working with here. Keep that in mind, that we're always reading the correct number. Let me show you some examples of how to use the protractor just as a quick refresher. Fifth graders always need the quick refresher. But before we get going here, we have to take a look at the angles. Okay, which one of these is a straight angle? This one looks pretty straight. We know that's 180. The next one, which one is a right angle? Right here is my 90 degree angle. Remember the perfect corner from yesterday's lesson? So a right angle. Now, where is my reflex angle? This is my reflex angle. That means it is greater than, or it's greater than 180, less than 360. Reflex is on this side. If I'm on this side, this is called an obtuse angle. You've learned these things before. I know you've learned them um, in third grade and fourth grade. This is a quick little refresher to help you out. But with this being said, you're going to have to take a look at these examples here today. Okay. Here's your protractor, and yours is obviously on um, your, your template. Let's see how I can make this a little little bit bigger here and easier to read. Okay, so I'm going to have to try and show you how I can get ADH on this template, okay? I'm going to go ahead and make this a little smaller. So what happens is you have to put the point right at the corner. The bottom line is right there, and when I'm looking at this, I'm going to follow all the way up to this point right here. It is less than 90, a little bit less, so I have to read the, the smaller number, which makes this an 88-degree angle. Let's take a look at this one right here. I'm going to move it so I can get it right on the corner, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and move it so I'm reading it. I'm going to read it from left to right this time. So I'm reading up all the way to this point right here. I know it is less than 90 degrees, so I have to read the smaller number here. So I'm reading from 60 to 70. Halfway between there would be 65. That's why that number is 65. Let's take a look at another one here. Another cute little angle. Do you see how you're always moving this protractor around? Okay. It's on the dot. Now I have to get it on this bottom line here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it just a little bit. It's kind of hard to do with the smart board. Okay. I'm reading from this point right here to this point right here. It's less than 90 degrees. So I have to read the acute angle. So it looks like it's a little less than 30 because this is my 30 mark right here. That's why I'm at a 28. To read some of the bigger angles. Okay. Let's come down here. Let's read this obtuse angle. It's bigger than 90. So I'm going to go right here, put it right on the dot. I have to have it right on the baseline of that. Okay. I'm reading right here. As you can see, there's two numbers there. I could read 120. I'll show you this in a bigger form. I could read the 120 or the 60. I have to keep in mind that this angle right here is an obtuse angle, so that's why I'm picking the bigger number. 
But I'm walking around tomorrow during, when you're working on this in your assignment, and you, you write down a smaller number than 90, but the number is actually an obtuse angle. I'm going to have to tell you to check it, okay? So it should be just fine as long as you're taking your time on this. Let's see if there's a few more down here at the bottom that I can practice with you. I think this helps kids out. I'm having trouble moving my screen. Let's measure this 171. Okay. I'm going to make this a little smaller to help you out. Okay. I'm going to put it right in the middle there. Put it right on the line. I'm going to be reading from my zero all the way over here. That's why it's at 170. Okay. I didn't pick the other number, the smaller number, because it's obviously bigger than 90 degrees. So that's why that one is 70 degrees. You're going to be having to use your projector quite a bit tomorrow, so of course ask questions if you need help so I can explain to you in person. This is a concept that we need to figure out right away because we will be seeing this every single time, if not often, during our math boxes. Hopefully this helped, and good luck with measuring angles.